completion. Man, I keep seeing everybody's fat processing racks in Ableton and transforming like a s into and then they're like, yeah, I just use a bunch of stock Ableton effects and then just load up some impeccable like 20 effect chain. It just transforms their sound completely. So you know what? I'm getting jealous and uh, it's time to make our own. So hopefully by the end of the video, I'm going to be transforming this into something absolutely hectic. <laughs> Bunch of effects and chains gonna split it into high, mids, lows, but your OTT, saturation, the coding, it's gonna be golden. I whipped up this operator bass thing before, super simple, um, square wave, square wave, not as intense, and sine wave, and then just gave it a little bit more movement by automating the levels of uh, second and third operators. First things first, just gonna start with a little subtle bit of glue compression. Gonna go ahead and EQ that. Um, <laughs> Threshold attack is gonna be slowish, but release is gonna be fast so it gets a punchier sound. Ratio two, we don't want too much compression yet, yet being the keyword. <laughs> Playing with the frequency, this will compress the whole thing, but this will compress it from 250 hertz onwards so it leaves like the sub bass intact. <laughs> Sweet, a little bit of OTT I'm feeling. And I mean a little bit. Now we're going to load up an EQ3. Gonna select the EQ3, hit Command G or Control G, um, and open this little tab here. And I'm just gonna duplicate this. So this is gonna be low. Command D or Control D, by the way. Mid and high. Gonna go into the low and mute the mid and high. Gonna go into the mids and mute the low and high. And then go, go into the high and mute the low and mid. So we can just solo these different bands. I'm thinking we process the bands individually with a few effects, then like OTT them a little bit later on, then check on some vocoding and some crazy shit to get them sounding epic. Alright, we'll start with the low. What could the low use? Maybe a little bit of overdrive. Kind of just like squishes the low end a bit, which sounds lovely now. Uh, add a saturator, turn on the soft clip, add some bass. We should probably sell this. drive and like before we'll use another glue compressor to add a little bit more punch to that low end so drop the threshold also going to use the EQ for this little like band pass selection and try to find a sweet spot I reckon our sub is probably cranking from like Look at that, that's a lot of sub. So like we might want to leave this sub bass section here and then just like compress this little section here. So we'll change the frequency to 100. Hopefully it's compressing this kind of area here. And we'll drop the threshold and make it a little bit more audible. Oh, I forgot about Q, we can fine tune this. the spectrum off. All right, let's see how this is shaping our sound. Not bad, not bad. All right, I think, I think that's pretty good for like the low end. What do we want to do with the mids? I think we want to make them wider and grittier. So to wind them up first, we could use a tiny, tiny bit of chorus. Tiny bit of chorus done. Delay. Delay is a lot of fun. I'm going to turn the sync off, make sure it's time. If we want to make like a robotic sound later on, I'm keeping that in mind just in case. Change this because we only want like the mid section. So keep the low mids. We'll make it wide around like the high mids, maybe like 1k. Turn the stereo link off and change it back to time. Gonna make these uh, values slightly different from each other. I think that's like the Haas effect or something. Turn the dry wet down. That's a bit robotic, I like that. Feedback down a bit. That could sound cool with um, uh, OTT after. 
they accentuate those little robotic sounds. It's not wide anymore. There we go. I think we hit our values way too low. Chuck a saturator before, we'll play around with before or after OTT actually. Analog clip, yeah. See what kind of other sounds we can get. Bass is fucking with it, that's it. Gonna use a filter. Change this to like the notch. Now we're talking, that's got some like Reesey action in it. I'm gonna crank up the LFO. Actually, it might try envelope first. Not bad, not bad. Still not wide enough. Maybe we need an another chorus and not fiddle around with any settings. Can we change the filter? Oh, now we can add some more distortion, yes! Alright, let's hit with the sub. <laughs> the high end's sounding a little bit left out. Don't worry, we'll crank that shit up. OTT. Because typically with like subs, you keep the mono and then the higher out the frequency spectrum they are, you make them wider. So sub, mono, mids, a little bit wide, high end, quite wide. So we're gonna make this wide. Maybe chuck a grain delay on it. We could use grain delay on the mid section as well. See how this plays out, check it out onto high. So we don't get a fat delay and it ends up sounding weird. Oh, I kind of like that though. Let's check that on the mid, see what it sounds like. No, that sounds bonkers. Back on the high. We could have this, but just for a little bit, I reckon, like. It kind of sounds like a sizzle after the sounds played, so that is sick. Uh, I'm gonna use this one before. This is our main one, so I'm gonna rename that to, <laughs> no, not I before A. Um, turn the sync off, make sure it's at the lowest value, which is one millisecond. Um, let's hear this now. You can create some crazy stuff with grain delay, I love it. I'm gonna keep in mind the pitch, just in case we don't go too far out. Maybe off with the OTD. Or maybe OTD after. OTT before the second grain delay. It's sounding very robotic. Let's change the fine tune. Okay, that could be a good fundamental layer for just the overall bulkiness, loudness of the sound. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check in another auto filter. I'm digging the notches, the notches sound sick, and the envelopes. And maybe LFO as well. That sounds all right. Turning the filter off makes it sound like it's got way too much mids. Do we dare with another OTT? I think that's our fifth OTT in this fat rack. Oh no. I think it's time for a vocoder actually. I've been saying I want to do some vocoding action. Oh. Can I fucking split the mids and highs into something? Oh my god, you can too. Another rack. What the? F that makes no sense unless the vocoder goes in here. Hopefully the sub's unaffected, but. Oh, this could work. Yes, groups within groups. This is why everybody loves the fat racks. All right, enhance on, sensitivity. Don't know. 
fast, precise. Retro. Uh, we can go 40 bands. What do we want? We don't want 20 hertz because the sub's got that. And we maybe want it a bit higher. Maybe just stick to the mids range. So maybe like 1,000. Two to 7K. Uh, four minutes is where it's at. Oh, I love the punchiness of the sub. It's in your face. Love it. Maybe less bands. I'm happy with that, actually. It's very brick wally and needs some sizzle. Erosion time. Maybe glue compressor because the bass is super punchy, but this really isn't with the mids and highs. Where's your grid at? At where's your grid at? Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We want glide. And we want one voice. The fucking grain delay on the high end. Where, where is it? Mids and high. It is that. What? I feel like if we're doing that, we do need OTT after it. But maybe just not sub. That is so much, and it's redlining. Man, that grain delay is starting to annoy me. Oh, cause we've got delay? There. I'm gonna chuck in some more erosion. All right, let's do it before and after. Weird. There it is. Oh boy, we're in for a trip. I like how the sub bass just instantly cut out. I guess that's a weird ass side effect of splitting all the frequency spectrums into three bands, low, mids, and highs, because the sub bass doesn't really hit its punchiness until it hits those bands. Unless we go in the opposite direction and yeet it up. We didn't even chuck reverb in this. All right, I'm getting rid of those grain delays. They are mildly irritating right now. That. Oh, it's gonna make it mono. All right, let's hear this on other shit actually, because we've just been jamming that same operator preset for the past five years. Definitely an over exaggeration. needs to be do your sounds sound like this well maybe it's time for sam's fat rack that is fat what 
Why don't we throw a fucking LFO one on that? Holy shit, where's the reverb? More. I love sound design. That's mad. Mad. Could the pitch envelope just not reset? The after effects of the reverb once all the distortions are finished with it. <clears throat> One, seven, four. <laughs> Key takeaways for the fat rack is first thing that comes to mind is OTT. Splitting out your lower mids and highs using EQ3s, or if you have a linear phase EQ like a fat filter one or ozone one, that'll probably be way better suited so you don't incur some phase issues later on. But for this, I was just using stock Ableton stuff. I mean, EQ3 does the job, it sounds crazy, and I, I'm happy with that. As long as you don't look too closely at it, you'll probably notice a bunch of phase issues. And yeah, just pull apart those three frequency bands, distort them differently. And then lastly, I think the key thing is to bring those three all together using like glue compressor, OTT, filter in this case. It will really just gel the whole thing together and that is what will make some epic sounds. I will leave this beautiful audio effect bass track up for download, link in the description. Thanks for watching this banger of a sound design episode. Hopefully you have a great day. See you next time guys and peace.